Well, hello again. In this example, you will learn how to apply the force-based approach to solve for reactions of a structure which is more than one degree statically indeterminate. We are going to be taking a look at this particular beam. It has a fixed end to the far right, has a couple of rollers at point A and B, and then has a uniformly distributed load of our beam where EI are constant over the entire length. So first order of business, we need to check the determinacy on this. So let's go ahead and label the reactions, RAY, RBY, RCY, RCX, and MC. One thing that you could do is very quickly recognize that you could solve for RCX simply by summing forces in the X direction. Okay, but let's run through the equations for determinacy check. We have a total number of five unknown forces. We haven't made any cuts, so we have one structural piece. We have three equations of equilibrium for each structural piece, giving us a total of three equations of equilibrium. So five minus three will result in two degrees statically indeterminate, which means I've got to select two redundant forces. I've already made a comment that RCX is something we could solve for just using equilibrium. So I would have to choose any two of the remaining four. Now as always, I want to select redundance, which will allow me to retain simple type of structures. And so if I choose RAY and RBY, as the redundance. Then what I'm left with when I remove those redundants is I'm left with these nice cantilever beams. Those are easy to deal with. I know I'm going to be able to use beam charts to help me along with this here. So let me sketch the deflected shape. Since we're statically indeterminate to the second degree, I had two redundants that were being removed and I always need to track what the displacements are wherever those redundants had been previously located. So I've got delta A and delta B. For the redundant structure, I'm going to actually have two of them since I had two redundants. What I want to do is I want to go ahead, take off all the existing loads that are on the structure, and apply back only one of the redundant forces. I'm going to go ahead and sketch the deflected shape for this, and we will go ahead and label the displacements that exist at those redundant forces. So this will be labeled as the displacement at A due to a force at A. This may be rewritten in terms of flexibility coefficients in the redundant force, so RAY times the flexibility, which is the displacement at A due to a unit load at A. I then need to label this displacement I want you to pay attention as I speak what these subscripts mean. So this is the displacement at B due to a load at A. So this could be rewritten in terms of that load at A times the flexibility coefficient, which is the displacement at B due to a unit load at A. All right, now we're ready to move on to the second redundant structure. So we'll put our unknown redundant force, RBY. We will make a sketch of the deflected shape here. Now let's go ahead and label these displacements. So this is the displacement at B due to force at B, rewritten in terms of the redundant force. It's RBY times the flexibility coefficient. And let's go ahead and get this one which is delta A, so displacement A due to the load at B, which is R B Y times F A B. Once we've got that, and we have been very explicit in the sketching of our redundant structures, we can go ahead and get our compatibility equations simply by summing up what is going on at each of the individual locations. So what I want to do is I want to sum up what is happening at point A, so that would include this as well, and then I'm also going to want to sum up what's happening at point B.
because we know in the original structure that there's got to be a zero displacement here and a zero displacement there and that'll get me my compatibility equation for me. So let's sum them up at point A is delta A plus delta AA plus delta AB and we know that that has got to equal a zero displacement. Summing them up at point B delta B plus delta B A plus delta B B and all of that is equal to zero. So two compatibility equations. I can then rewrite those in terms of the flexibility coefficients. So delta A plus R A Y F A A plus R B Y FAB, that's equal to zero. Delta B plus RAY, FBA plus RBY, FBB equals to zero. And that'll be the final form that I want those to be present in. Now before we start making any calculations on these, I want us to be very clear in our minds that we are going to be looking at these flexibility structures and flexibility structures are the ones that simply have unit loads instead of the redundant forces placed upon them. So I'm going to go ahead and label this here. So the displacement at A due to a unit load at A, displacement at B due to a unit load at A, and then flexibility structure number two which is the displacement at B due to a unit load at B, displacement at A due to a unit load at B. We will move through the deflection calculations rather rapidly because we are going to be able to use beam charts to assist us in this. So for calculating this delta A, I'm going to have an L is equal to 20 feet x equals to 20 feet and w equal to 1 kip per foot. So I won't write out the full equation, you can do that yourself, but just plugging those values into the equation above, I would get delta A is equal to negative 20,000 over EI. For computing delta B, I will use the same equation with the following quantities. L is equal to 20 feet, X is equal to 10 feet, and of course W is equal to 1 kip per foot. You plug that in, delta B will compute out to be negative 7083.3 over EI. We now want to use beam charts to evaluate flexibility structure number one. So for FAA we will use L is equal to 20 feet, X is equal to 20 feet, and P is equal to negative 1. Now why negative 1? Because on my flexibility structure it is pointing in the up direction and the beam chart has it pointed in the down direction. So FAA, using the equation above, would compute out to be 2,666.7 oh, over EI. Then for FBA, I will use the same equation, L is equal to 20 feet, but this time X is going to be taken as 10 feet, P is going to be taken as the negative 1, and thus F B A is equal to 833.3 EI. We have learned and we know that FBA is equal to FAB. And so I'm not going to bother with calculating FAB because I already have that forming. So as I move on to the second flexibility structure. Let's remind you what that looks like. 
see where the point load is being placed and all I'm gonna have to solve for on that one is FBB because I already know what this is no it's the same there so what you're gonna see is I'm going to use a beam chart which simply is a cantilever beam with a point load on the end and I'm going to treat it though where L is equal to 10 feet X is equal to 10 feet P is equal to negative 1. Let's be clear here that this is for calculating F B B. And when I plug these values into the equation up above, F B B is equal to 333.3 EI. I am then prepared to plug those in to the two compatibility equations. You'll notice where I've got the deltas and then the flexibility coefficients present in there. So you've got two equations, and here are the two unknowns, RAY and RBY. Use whatever tools you have available to you to compute these. We find that RAY is 3.93 kips, and RBY is equal to 11.43 kips. Both of those come out to be positive, which means that they are acting in the up direction. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch those on here. 3.93 kips, 11.43 kips, and then using just your basic statics, you can now solve for the remainder of these. So this is 4.64 kips, and this will produce a moment here 7.14 get feet. That concludes this example, and as always, it is an absolutely beautiful day for studying structures.